Hey everyone, in the previous video we talked about how to create migrations and generate a database from those migrations. So now I want to work with that database. So it's real simple, but the recommended way to get practice is actually to use an interactive mode. So what you can do is you can say python manage.py shell. And that'll open an interactive mode. I'm not entirely sure how it's different from the normal interactive mode, but that's what the documentation suggested to do, so we're just going to go with it. And in here, we can start working with books. But by default, it's not just going to work, because we actually have to import it. So to do that, we say from, and then your app name, reading, dot models, import book. Now it should work. So to create a book, here's what we're going to do. We're going to assign it to a variable and pass in some data. And we're going to use named arguments here. So the title is are you my mother, comma, pages. We'll just go 72, hit enter. And now we have a book object. Is this in the database? Mm, not quite. We have a book object in memory in our application that's running. But we need to store it on disk. So we say book. It's actually really super easy. Dot save. Boom. That's simple. So now you might be wondering, Caleb, is this like legit in the database or are you just fibbing with us? Well, I'll prove it to you. To get all the data from the database, what you do is you say book, capital B here, so the class, dot objects, dot all. Hit enter and we get a query set. And there's actually two things in here. I apologize because I did this example once already and I, I screwed it up. So I'm doing it again, but that's why we already have one book object in here. So yours will probably just be one in here. Now you might be wondering, can we get any prettier output than this? And actually you can. This is just based off of the string representation of the book. So we can override the stir method and I'm just going to do some string formatting here. So we will say title is pages long. Now this isn't going to do anything different. By default, you actually have to exit and reopen. So we exit and then we reopen the shell. We don't have to create a new book object, it's already in the database. So we just have to get the data from the database. So first import, so from reading.models import book. Book.objects.all. Ah, uh, my bad guys, I'm a noob. Go self.title and self.pages. Jeez, come on Caleb, we're like 200 videos into this Python series. All right, let's try this again. So from reading dot models import book book dot objects dot all. There we go. Now we're getting somewhere. Now you might be confused because we changed some of the code, but we didn't have to do any migrations. Last time when we changed this code here, we had to do a migration. Well, this doesn't actually change the database structure at all. So we are fine. We don't have to worry about it. If we were going in here and changing the actual columns, that's going to be a problem and we would have to create a new migration. Now when you're working with this query set and you want to get a specific book, you can do that. So just say book.objects.get and you can pass in pk and a number. So that stands for primary key, so this will grab the first book in there and it will return it. So you can assign it to a variable if you want or in this case we just printed it. So let's assign it to a variable. We'll say book, book.objects.get, pk equal to one. And I think you can also use id equal to one. It'd probably help if you didn't say booge and said book instead. So make sure it says book. And let's try this. And there we go, it seems to work. So we can say book and that's the information. So you can easily update any of the database objects just by setting values. So book.title say new title book dot pages set it to something else and then we just say book dot save so you see it's pretty simple to work with objects then we can check the database so book dot objects dot all 
and check it out, it's totally updated. Now that you know the basics of working with data inside of a database, in the next video I want to talk about querying this data and hopefully display it on a web page. That would be pretty awesome. Stay tuned, I'll see you in the next one.